Hi, this is Tom Dick. I'm a math advisor for Texas Instruments, and this short video is part of the TI and Focus AP Calculus series. We're going to take a look at working with families of functions on the TI and Spire using BC free response question number five from 2019 as an example. I've pulled up a graph screen. It actually has a grid uh, added to it, and we're going to look at the family of functions that was under consideration in this problem. It's a rational function. I'm going to enter into f1. The numerator is 1, and then we'll have a quadratic that has a parameter constant in it. That quadratic is x squared minus 2x plus a constant k, and it's that constant k that's providing a parameter. As soon as you enter that, uh, the TI Inspire is going to prompt you to whether you want to create a slider and we do want to use a slider here so I'm going to set the settings for my slider uh, we'll go ahead and leave the initial value at k equals 1 and I'm going to give it a range from minus 10 to 10 and let's set the step size to 1 and uh, in terms of the orientation of the slider I'm going to actually set it up to be vertical and I'm also going to make it minimized and what that means is instead of a like a tuner bar it'll just be a couple of clicker arrows there we go you see it up there in the upper left uh, our initial value of k equals 1 if you look at that denominator that would be x squared minus 2x plus 1 or x minus 1 quantity squared and that's why we're having this vertical asymptote at x equal 1 all right, let's try some other values of k. I'm going to increment k upwards, and we can see that that vertical asymptote disappears for k equals 2, 3, and so on, and we get this flatter and flatter looking curve with a maximum at 1. When we return to k equals 1 and go downward, uh, k equals 0, I'm covering up k there. The denominator would just be x squared minus 2x. That means we'll have a couple of vertical asymptotes at x equals 0 and x equals 2. If I decrease k further, uh, we're continuing to have two vertical asymptotes, but they're spreading apart. There's one at minus 1 and 3. Uh, I'm going to return now to k equals 1. And let's go ahead and address some of the questions that were in this problem. All right, uh, part A of this problem BC5 uh, asked us to find the value of k that would result in a tangent line at x equals 0 with slope 6. So I'm going to go ahead and add a point uh, and a tangent line to the curve at its y-intercept. All right, so I'm noticing I'm marking uh, 0, 1 there, which is the y-intercept for this particular value of k. Let me go ahead and lengthen out uh, the appearance of that tangent line. It's got the double arrows on it. and You can see the equation of it's y equal 2x plus 1. As I change the value of k, of course that's changing the tangent line, but you can see that's happening dynamically. Uh, and it even, even as we continue on to these ones that have asymptotes, uh, we're getting that tangent line uh, unless that asymptote happens to be at x equals 0. Now I've returned to k equals 1 and we've gone to a notes page and I've gone ahead and set up the equation we would need to solve to find that value of k. Notice I've set the derivative of my function at x equals 0 equal to 6 and solved and noting that that value of k was square root of 3 over 3, at least one of the values, I'm going to go back and change that value directly in the slider. Notice that I've, uh, in the reported value of the slider, I'm actually entering now the square root of 3 divided by 3. And let's go ahead and check if and see if that value does indeed give us a slope of 6 for our tangent line. In this problem we were only asked for a positive value of k satisfying that condition and so that is the one value of k that does the trick. Now I'm going to set the value of k equal to negative 8. That's for the next part of the question and we can see that's giving us a member of the family that has a couple asymptotes. Let me get rid of the tangent line 
And now this question is asking for the value of the integral between 0 and 1 for this member of, the, of our family of functions with k equal to negative 8. We can see it's going to be a fairly small magnitude negative number. To calculate it exactly, let's go to the notes page. And in our math box, we're going to enter a calculation, which is from calculus, a definite integral. And so we'll pull up our integral template. We'll put in our bounds of integration, which are 0 and 1. And then our we've updated the, the uh, function to have that parameter of k equal negative 8. So all I need to do is enter f1 of x as my integrand. And finally, our variable of integration x. And that should give us the value we're looking for. And we can see that it is, is a fairly small magnitude negative number. Now the last part of this problem uh, asks us to consider the function with k equal 1. That was that very first value we tried. And remember that gives us a single asymptote, vertical asymptote, at x equal 1. And we're asked for the integral between 0 and 2. Now since 1 is in the interior of the interval, we'll need to split this integral into two pieces. Uh, one of the pieces is already there, kind of left over from the last problem, though we have updated f1 of x. Uh, the other interval we need to consider would be the interval from 1 to 2. Now I'm going to go ahead and set both of these up. So we have both the integral from 0 to 1 and the integral from 1 to 2. Uh, each of those has a uh, discontinuity in f1 at one of the endpoints. Uh, and we can see that uh, using the computer algebra version of T-Inspire, both of these um, improper integrals diverge to infinity. If either one does, then we know the entire improper integral diverges. If you don't have computer algebra, you can always try a value very close to 1 in this first integral. I'm replacing 1 by a value very close to 1, but a little bit less. In the lower integral, I'll replace 1 by a value very close to 1 and a little bit more, 1.001. We can see both of those report large values, which support but don't prove that this is diverging. OK, that winds up this short video. For more resources like these, see education.ti.com.